in the vibrant cityscape of Nigeria's FCT. A less visible but critical issue unfolds amongst indigenous communities. This is the apparent lack of priority given to education by the largely sedentary and highly rural indigenous inhabitants of the territory. The combination of lack and low level of awareness of education among the people indigenous to Abuja have historical, cultural, economic, and administrative antecedents. Findings reveal that up until 1976, when the federal capital territory was carved out by the then military regime of late General Mutala Muhammad, not a single public school existed in the area. A trace of the educational background of the territory showed that period between 1980 to 1996 witnessed a quantum flip on the expansion in the delivery of opportunities for education in the territory. The number of primary schools skyrocketed, going from 54 to 210 within just five years. Documented accounts by Apuja Opedia reveals further that by 1989, there were 216 primary schools, and by the end of 2002, the country's 285 public primary schools. There are currently 2,000. 493 private primary and secondary schools spread across the territory. The curious but worrying scenario, however, is that the indigenous communities within the territory have remained generally educationally backward. This begs the question, why is this so? Were they excluded or neglected? Was this state of educational backwardness a community choice? In a broad sense, indigenous people are citizens whose forebears and children were raised on land that they assumed to be their ancestral homes and birthright until by dint of law or share power, they lose that land to new owners who claim it as theirs in the public interest or as booty won fair and square in war and conquest. In the case of Nigeria, the indigenous communities of the nation's federal capital territory are those whose parents were born before 1976 and the land now designated as Nigeria's federal capital territory. The people indigenous to the FCT, otherwise known as Abuja Original Inhabitants AOIs, are the social category of people from nine ethnic collectives of Amwamwa, Basa, Edbira, Gade, Ganagana, Bagi, Bari, Gwandara, and Koro. Along with our four collectives, Hausa and Fulani also live in the territory. In fact, the name Abuja was derived from the name of the then Hausa king said to have found the place on 1825 called Abu Bakar, but nicknamed Abu. Ja was given to him as a result of his fair skin complexion, hence Abu Ja. Ja actually means red in Hausa. Ekoni ni ipile dagba soke ibubu a ujo. Ikbo wo ni awala koso FCT ibe eto eko si gan. Elo ni owo ti wongi a soto fun ni nu eto eshu na. La wongi 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 a soto fun. Ki ni ibe le wongi a wongi keko olu koni. Ati a wongi keko bo ye ti a wongi li eko giga wongi kwe se gan. Fu a wongi da wongi lori shirishi. Da hapo mongwa lori eto leaves and worms. Eto a koni lo gbo a ti lani lo ye. Ti yo ma waye si oju woron yi ni ose ose. Lori ero mo u ma woron. AD4 TV Radio, one lay show in Cast Center for Investigative Journalism. We look at Lenny Mark Ato Foundation, we show Unique Bowery, a Mark Padano Reo. An official projection puts the population of the indigenous people of the FCT at 450,000 households. These households are part of the current metro area population of Abuja, which as of 2023 is put at 
The notion of indigeneity means that one's biological father must be deemed to be a bona fide member of one of Nigeria's current 36 states known as the state of origin. The situation in FCT is a replica of the growth of new cities in several parts of the world where progress is built on the backs of indigenous people in a zero-sum manner. Often, the original claimants who lose out bear the brunt of displacement, while new inhabitants sometimes claim to have discovered what was always a known place, renaming it, reapportioning it. This situation is no different for the indigenous population of the territory and in a more specific terms, education is among the major casualties proven to be a complex challenge. Educationally, we are a little bit down, but with times now, what has kept the, uh, the place down educationally? What is the reason? Sometimes financially. We have been, if you go to school, the money, the charges so high. So some people doesn't have the money to push their children to the school. In 2022, the Center for Human Rights and Civic Education, CHRICED, at the climax of a month-long series of events to focus on the plight of AOIs on the MacArthur Foundation funded project. Several issues were raised, including the right to land, livelihood, and essential social services and amenities, especially quality education and health. That platform also raised concern about the unequal representation of AOIs in government and governance structures. In this context, the entire territory is represented by one senator and House of Representatives each. Another drawback is that the original inhabitants of the Abuja do not enjoy constitutional recognition other than their citizenship, unlike other Nigerians originally from any of the 36 states of the Federation who can treat Abuja and the FCT as home and access opportunities. Many AOIs are hardly able to do so. Our land has forcefully been, forcefully been taken away by government. That is where happens to be the source of our income, of which we use to pay for our children. Our land has been taken away. By chasing us away. And proposing the development on us by grabbing our lands, giving to called developers. Then, we are a source of livelihood. L let me tell you one, land to life, life to land. When you deprive existence of human from this land to life, you have killed him. We all, we, the indigenous people have been known for agriculture and no provision for that again. You have taken over my land where I farm pay my children's school fees, now today I can't do that again. So how do you expect me to further my children to higher institutions? These are the problems. While there have been moves to drive up enrollment of indigenous children in the territory's education ecosystem, such as scholarship grants to encourage post-primary education, many among the Abuja original inhabitants do not seem to prioritize education. Malam Abubakar Zuba, Dean at the Federal College of Education Zuba, aligns the situation with lack of appreciation of the importance of education as a means of empowerment and progress. When OSA education came in, there were reasons why our parents were rejecting it. One, they were not happy, they were not supporting the idea of boys and girls mixed up together in a class. They thought it was a taboo. That is one of the main reasons. Two, the issue of sending boys to school, leaving family, was a serious problem that if you send your male child to school, the family is going to come back. And for the girls, just like I told you, do not even send them at all. And then, traditionally, things were not done as it is now. 
to say you are sending your child. Most especially when the, the school came, it was through missionary. And uh, already Islam was already sedented. So most of them rejected the idea of the white man school, that is the Western education. It's a stark reality. Indigenous students often find themselves entangled in behavioral issues, rarely advancing beyond secondary school. There are worries over the psychosocial effects of the trend of falling back to drug abuse by the youths among the indigenous Abuja folks. Our traditional rulers, our religious leaders, government must be on ground, all hands must be on deck for sensitization to curb this societal menace that has to do with bad influence of the peer group, which largely became addicted to different, to, to, to dangerous drugs that beyond affecting their health, retard their educational development. That must be changed. Improper parental care causes a lot of this. There are student, uh, parents that don't even look after the behavior, the movement of their children. You see, a child, most of these child, children that are not well trained by their parents, those that do not receive proper care from their parents, they have a lot of strategies that they can easily convince the disciplined ones before you know it will now be causing a lot of setbacks in education. As a consequence of the prevailing educational status of Abuja original inhabitants, the standing policy of 1% equity in civil service appointments and recruitment for AORIs remain largely unmet, given that many do not have the educational foundation required to take up the slots. I disagree with that. We all know the value of education for your personal purpose. Without education, without we being educated, you will interview me and I will be able to have something to say. So we know that either a government job, not government job, uh, education is necessary. Either by you acquire education so that you can be able to read your Bible or Quran. Uh, you acquire education because my mother couldn't assess it, my father couldn't assess it. I have to assess it because if you give me 1,000 naira today, I should be able to identify this 1,000 naira. So we, this is necessary for we. But I can tell you, government cannot succeed by wiping our generation with the one corny way by bringing development and without giving us free education. So you are saying that it's not true that original inhabitants shy away from education? No. It's the government that is killing the education for the original inhabitants. Not we shining away. We see many of our graduates on ground and uh, this is federal capital territory they were supposed to enjoy to have some portions that are given to us even through federal character commission but uh, that position is not looked into for the uh, indigenous we see that uh, employments will take place in various ministries but hardly we see indigenous that are employed, even if they go, because they don't have uh, people on top. They will attend the interview, they may be successful in all the questions asked to them, but by the end of the day, when the list come out for the successful countries, they will not see us there, because we don't have people on top. We have been denied federal, federal appointments. How many of us are in FCDA today working? How many of us are in UBEB working? I didn't think we are granted that chance of being into government. At least some of us, so many of us will be civil servants. They will also be part of the people planning for the sake of our children educationally. It is evident that cultural and societal factors sometimes discourage families from prioritizing education. AOIs are said to be held back by some cultural norms and practices. For example, twins are still allegedly killed in the Kujay Area Council of the FCT, same for a child whose mother dies giving birth. 
It is also considered an abomination in certain parts of the AOI communities for a child to grow its first seeds in the top row mass against the bottom row. A visit to the palace of the Agora Uzuba, the Sarikim Pada, Al-Haji Muhammad Bachaga was vehement in pushing off such cultural occurrences, at least not within his domain. It don't happen here at all. It don't happen in, my, in our area here. Are you aware of any part of FCT where it happens? At all. I don't think. I've not had it. Government run primary and secondary schools in the FCT are offered for free. I don't think it's a reality. It's no longer happening. Because if you could see before, in those days, if they say it's free education, much amount of money will not be paid. But this time around, if 20,000 was paid for registration in junior secondary school or, second or senior secondary school, the last year it, was, it, it, it increased to 30,000. Now it may increase to 40,000 which is not mostly affordable by the parent, by some of the parents. For me, it's no longer like that. But I think it's better for us to go out and invite non-governmental organizations that will come up and be helping us. Things are, however, changing with the times. Many of the younger demography of the Abuja original inhabitants are showing a greater embrace of schooling across the territory. Yes, I school. Yes, I they, they do teach us well, and I'm very grateful because we have been on a scholarship right from nursery. If I will have opportunity when I finish school, I will come back here and teach for free. We are coming up now. Before, they don't go to school, but now they are going to school. Occasionally, they are, they are qualified once now. Presently, the level of students enrollment is of indigenous personnel is very, very, very encouraging. It's at higher level. Students are competing from village to village, from houses to houses now. What they want to see that uh, they are all in school, and that one is going on. Only that they don't have much backing, no much scholarship, no scholarship for them. They are only trying with their parents. The little scholarship you can see is through area council and how, how much do they give, and how many times in a decade. This is what is happening. But for example, here in MCT College of Education, I will tell you now that about 45% of the students are indigenous of, of MCT. Yes. Yeah, by the time you sit on it, you can easily use this. You turn, or okay? You can even turn it. It's stiff. Ah, it's okay, so yes, it is motion because it is rotating. As a sign of the changing times, Zamani Yusuf is among imagined touch bearers of younger educated indigenous inhabitants of Abuja. He teaches the sciences in one of the private secondary schools in the heart of Abuja. He tells us about the white blood cell and red blood cell, and then he told us that the fight that we fight against diseases from our body. And Mr. Zamani is a very jovial man and he's very kind and he's good in what he do. Quite okay. A good number of us don't go to school simply because the Western education gets to us lately compared to other parts of Nigeria. It is not until when the transfer of the federal capital down to Abuja that then we begin to see the need to enroll into formal school. And then, as I then, I will tell you that a good number of us are actually good in education. While education in the FCT is one of opportunities and challenges, and while some significant investments are known to have been made to expand access to education, indigenous communities still face barriers that prevent them from truly embracing this path to empowerment. We are saying, okay, fine, if you are taking over our land, make provisions, give us free educations. But there's free education in FCT. Where? Education supposed to be given to original inhabitants 
free, compulsory. So that tomorrow, our children should not become terrorists and disturb the federal capital territory. So that you can enjoy the peace in seat of the power. That if the Nigeria, if the seat of power has insecurity issue, there is no single state that will face that. Educationally, they should come to our heads. We should open more school to us. But our children should go to that school and bring the price down. AD4 TV Radio, we focus on education with emphasis on research and innovation, science and technology, women and girl child education, children, health, youth and sports, socio-political and economic reforms, security, environment, entrepreneurship and entertainment. We'll give you information at your fingertips. Learn on the go. Follow AD4 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram and YouTube. AD4 TV Radio. Reliable and credible. We love you, AD4 TV Radio.